We are now in February, right? Hey, how many of you saw your shadow yesterday? Anybody see that shadow yesterday? I saw my shadow. It was a beautiful day. And all that stuff about six weeks more winter, you guys are in Atlanta. Trust me, you do not have six weeks more winter. Well, luckily we have a couple more weeks in winter. The spring is always early in Atlanta. But, um, even some of my flowers are coming up already. So uh, we know that spring is around the corner. February, we're past January, we're past the Christmas season, we're past January, and now we're gonna start going full force into spring. And spring is a wonderful time. And today is a wonderful day because today we have not one, not two, but four baptisms, amen? Amen, amen. so that is like amen, 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 and amen, amen? That's four amens right there. So we're so happy today of, of the wonderful day we have. This is a high Sabbath, and we have a Pastor Corp is going to give us our message. So I pray like we'll all be blessed throughout the day. Let us all get our minds in with that. And I'm going to turn it over to, to Raquel. Is going to, is going to come in and give us one on uh, youth, on uh, youth. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. I'd just like to give a quick update and a, a update about our ministry, our young adult ministry. We have a brand new group here, amen? This is for 18 to 35-year-olds. Do we have any 18 to 35-year-olds, young professionals? One, two, three. I'd like to see you guys all out with us. We have a new group. We're meeting up every second Friday of every month. We come together. We have fellowship. We pray. We talk. Last week or last month, we met up and we met with our brand new pastor, our associate pastor and his wife. We encourage you guys to come out next week, February 9th, at Pastor's House. Um, another quick announcement, April 27th, please mark your calendars. We're having our first young adult Sabbath here. Amen? Our young adults will be leading out the entire service from start to finish, and we cannot wait to see you there. Please continue to pray for us as we go on with our ministry. Have a happy Sabbath. Amen, Raquel. I say, Raquel, you got We have a busy day, so so make it distinct. She did a great job. Amen. So we're so happy. Um, we have a, a big day coming up. We're going to have our uh, begin our service right now. We invite the songsters to come up here, and um, let's all be blessed. Good morning. Dear Lord, we want to thank you so much for allowing us to be here in this place today, in your house of worship. Lord, we thank you for your Sabbath day. This day that can be described without even a word, just the day to release, 
to let go of the stress, and to simply be together in worship. Thank you for being in this place, Lord. May the worship that is done here today be lifted up to your throne. May you be glorified today, and may we leave this place changed. May we leave this place with a better picture of you to share with the world. We love you, and we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Got a lot of mics out there. I want to uh, take this time to welcome everyone. We have more people in church now than we did 10 minutes ago. Um, and I want to welcome those online, wherever, which camera's on. Um, we're glad that we're all here. I um, want to give you thanks for coming today. Today is our Sabbath day, the first Sabbath of February. So the, the year is moving on. And like I mentioned before, we have four baptisms. Amen, 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 and amen, okay? It's a big, big Sabbath. Jesus Christ is in our midst. The Holy Spirit is here. Amen? So let us all rejoice. Let us all rejoice that we are in the house of the Lord. You know, time is getting short, and it's going to come a time pretty soon where we won't be able to gather like this. Okay? So we, we need to know whom we believe in. Okay? So this is the time to, as we come together to really tune into God, surrender ourselves, and be ready for that glorious day when he's going to come again to bring us home. Amen. I want to bring James up here. He's going to give us scripture reading. Happy Sabbath, church. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. In the New King James Version Bible, it says, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. It is now time for our children. You know, we need, uh, Wes, I heard, we need some people to do children's stories. So if you're interested, um, they don't ask me because I'd probably give a children's story like on the Mark of the Beast and they go back crying, you know. <laughs> so, so we don't want the kids to go back crying. So, so uh, but we need people to lift up Jesus and give happy Jesus stories. But it's, it's now time for the, G, uh, for the children's stories. So we invite the kids to come up. And those of you who have uh, spare dollar bills or five dollar bills, all this money goes to the Worthy Student Fund. We have a school over here. We have parents that want to send their kids, and this money offsets their, their tuition. So um, give generously. Good morning, boys and girls. Are y'all having a good day so far? Okay. All right. So I have a story to tell you today. My story is about a little girl named Maria. But first, can you guys tell me what this is? Nathaniel? She said stethoscope. Can anyone tell me what that does? Okay, go ahead, Annabelle. Okay, good, Nathaniel.
He says it helps here if the heart is beating. Very good. So we, we use it to listen to your heart. We can also listen to your lungs. And we can also listen to your belly when we use a stethoscope. I know. <laughs> Have you guys ever had a stomach ache before, a really bad stomach ache? Yeah, those are the worst, right? So my story is about a little girl named Maria. One day she had a stomach ache here. So her mom went and felt and touched her, and sure enough, Maria's stomach was so warm. And then mom touched her head, and her forehead was warm also. Can you guys guess what was going on? Go ahead. Yes, Maria had a fever. So her mom said, okay, Maria, we got to go to the urgent care. So mom got in the car, and they drove to the urgent care, and there the doctor and the nurses, they assessed Maria, and they ran some tests, and the tests came back conclusive. You guys know what that word means? No, okay. So it means that every test pointed at the same problem. They found out Maria had appendicitis. Do you guys know what that is? A virus, it could be an infection of the appendix. You guys know what the appendix is? No. So it's a little tube that's in the right side of the lower part of your belly. Can you touch the right side of the lower part of your belly? Your appendix is inside your belly. So the doctor told Maria's mom that she had appendicitis and that it was an emergency and she had to get her to the hospital right away. Then the doctor called the hospital and told them Maria was on her way and that she had appendicitis and then she would need help right as soon as she got there. When they got to the emergency room, Maria was given medications for her pain. She got some medications for her infection. And then they called in two specialists. One was called an anesthesiologist and the other one is a surgeon. Can you guys guess what they do? The surgeon does surgery, uh-huh, Nathaniel. Not off, but open. <laughs> so the anesthesiologist gives medicine that helps a person go to sleep if they have to have any kind of surgery or like a procedure. It helps, the medicine helps them to go to sleep and that way they don't feel any pain when they have to have surgery. So Maria had a successful surgery and when she woke up, she had teddy bear in her room, she had balloons, all her family was there, she had get well cards in her room, and the surgeon told mom about all the surgery and how everything went well, and told mom how to take care of Maria for the next few weeks. Before they left the hospital though, the nurse told mom all the medications Maria had to take and how to change her bandages. She even told her what foods Maria could have and what food she shouldn't have and that she should stay away from any strenuous activity. While playing with her teddy bear, Maria asked mom, why did God let this happen to me? Why didn't he stop it and just heal me? And mom thought about it, because that's a hard question, right? Mom thought about it for a while. And she said, well, we don't always understand everything that happens in the world, or even everything that happens to us but we do know that God is faithful. And when we needed help, he sent us all the people at the urgent care, all the people in the hospital that checked on you, all the people that prayed for you and all your friends and family that came to visit you. And Maria thought that was a pretty good answer. Then she asked mom, what about the scar? Is that going to be permanent? Do you guys know what that word means, permanent? Go ahead. Permanent means it stays forever, yes. So mom said, yeah, unfortunately, you will have that scar, but guess what? Think of it as a good reminder of God's faithfulness because he helped save you. Things could have been much worse, but God sent people to help when we needed them. What can we learn from this story? God uses many people to make a difference in this world. And he wants, to, he wants you all to be a part of that. Can you guys tell me of some ways that you can help? Go ahead, Nathaniel. Can you come and say that? Say a 
help when somebody's getting bullied. So it's helping someone out when they're being bullied. Um, you guys can help at home by helping with the laundry, helping the tidy up. You guys can help at school. And you guys can even help at church. I know a lot of you guys have done um, read Bible verses. You guys have been greeters in church. So I want to encourage you guys, even though you're small, to come in and be willing to help out. Does anybody want to help out by helping me pray today? All right, I'll take three of you guys. Dear Jesus, thank you for a day. Thank you that we all came to your church. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you so much. Bless us. Bless our family. Bless the church family. Bless my mom and dad. And bless my dad and my brothers. Bless my cousins. Bless everybody in my, in my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone who's here. Bless everyone who's here. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for this Sarah. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for another day. Thank you for this song. Thank you for this Jesus name I pray. Thank you. Amen. Let them help when they want to. <laughs> Thank you, guys. children of the world, red, brown, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus, uh Amen, amen. Thank you for the children's story. Um, it is now time for um, tithes and offering. Uh, this is a time where we give back to God what is rightfully his. We know that um, we are all blessed. We are all blessed here today. And we all have jobs, or most of us do, and, um, and we have an income and we have a living, and God provides that. That can be taken away like that. So let us praise God for the blessings he gives us and give back to him. You know, time, like I said before, time is short, and the money you give goes to salaries for pastors and different things. And, and uh, you know, hopefully evangelism will come about this. So give today when you can. Um, so we invite the deacons to come forward. Also, we'll have special music also from uh, Sydney and Elijah. So. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks, Lord, for the blessings you've given us, how you provided for us, and how we live in a, a nation that lets us uh, freely work and freely give and freely do the things we need to do. Let us give back to you because you've shed your grace on the United States. And we, we give back to you now because, because of all the blessings you give us. Bless every penny that goes into the baskets today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. How are you guys doing today? Amen. That is good. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. That is good. Today we're going to be singing Amazing Grace.
Definitely deserves an amen. Amen. It's now time for intercessory prayer. Um, as, we, as we come to the Lord in prayer, you know, we've got four people today, amen, for baptism. And they made the decision. So as we pray, I want you to, to look at your life, you know. Maybe, maybe your life has not gone the way it should have. And, and you feel like maybe you need to be rebaptized. Rebaptism re re is like you're making a covenant with God and saying, Lord, whatever I've done, I'm ready to go forward with you. So if you think you, you feel like that, talk to the pastors after church, or maybe you've never been baptized. This is, this is a day to think about it. So as we come to prayer, if you'd like to come up here with me, please do, as we uh, sing our uh, prayer song, and uh, we will pray together. We pray, take our hearts and turn far away.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, Lord, because we're on our knees. It's the place where we should be. We're on our knees before you. This is your holy time. This is your holy hour. And this is the time we come before you. We want to give you thanks, Lord, for bringing us here. You, you've kept us through the last week. We're all sinners. We don't deserve to be under your wings, but, Lord, you died for us that we could be here. We're so thankful for the sacrifice you made for us, and we accept that sacrifice today. I pray a special prayer for our four baptismal candidates today who are going into the water to, to, to make that decision, to make that covenant with you, to say, whatever I've done in my life, it's over, and from this moment on, I am a child of God. Lord, we give you thanks for these four, and I pray for each one here. If we want to make that decision, I pray you all make that decision today, whether at home or if you want to make it in the pool. Just make that decision to surrender yourself to God. Let each one of us come back to you. Lord, time is so short, and we have no time. The lot of rain is going to fall, and we need to evangelize. 2024 has to be the year. We see the world is, the world is talking about it, and, and they are planning something sinister for us in, in a few years. So we pray, Lord, that at this time, while the window is still open, while the four, uh, the four corners of the earth are being held back by the angels, that we have this opportunity to go out and spread your word to others. Each one of us is an evangelist in our own way. So I pray for each one of us here today to rededicate ourselves to you because time is short. And I look forward to the time where we could be kneeling in, on the streets of gold before Jesus Christ. That is my hope. So I pray it's your hope too. So I pray, Lord, for each one here that we make that decision. I also pray for our, our campus, our school, our teachers, our administrators who are, who are um who are taking our young people that many of you have entrusted to them, that they will be uh, truthful with them, or that they will be holy with them, and that they will teach them the ways of God. So I pray for them also, and I pray for uh, our pastoral staff that I hear that want to really take our church to the next level, especially reaching out to others. So I pray for them, and I pray for Pastor Corp today who's going to give us our message. May his words come directly from the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary where Jesus is ministering to us. He's not going to be there forever, so I pray all of us make that decision today. So bless our service, bless each one here, and may your presence be with us today. We invite the Holy Spirit. It's my prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen. little maintenance up here. It is now time for our baptismal candidates. Amen? Amen. 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 These are four from our Hispanic church that have made that decision for Jesus Christ. They're going to come up here. And they're going to uh, give their vows to prove, which they don't need to prove because they're up here, to prove that they believe in the, in the church of Jesus Christ, in yes, the remnant right. church. So I pray for, uh, let's pray for them. And not only today, but tomorrow too. Vamos a estar orando por ellos uh, hoy en día y, y todos los días. Amen. So uh, I've never had this before. Es, es primera <laughs> vez que he tenido esto. <laughs> so anyway, um, like I said, so our pastor here is going to read the vows and let us keep them in prayer throughout the coming week, through the months. Let's support them. 
They're making their decisions for Jesus today. El pastor presentará los votos y sigamos teniéndolos en nuestras oraciones por días y semanas y meses que siguen. I was about to speak in Spanish. Ya iba a hablar español. Well, it only happens live. Solamente sucede cuando estamos en vivo. Church, God is joyful today. Iglesia, hoy Dios está muy alegre. We are so happy. Last week we were talking about our prayers that we have many baptisms. La semana pasada hablamos que estábamos pidiendo en oración muchos bautismos. And the Lord has answered our prayer. Y aquí el Señor ha contestado. Our prayer is that this year we are able to fill this baptistry many times. Nuestro deseo, nuestra oración para este año es que podamos llenar este bautisterio muchas veces. So that our head deacon is just running back and forth and say, Pastor, the, baptist, the, the, the pool is, is filled and ready. Para que el, el, uh, el anciano pueda venir corriendo y diga, Pastor, el bautisterio está listo. But the reality is that signifies that the church is working to push and complete the mission. Pero la realidad, eso significa que es la iglesia que está trabajando para lograr esa misión. We have a mission that God has given us. Es la misión que Dios nos ha entregado. And when people hear what God has said, they accept his call. Y cuando la gente escucha lo que Dios ha llamado, ellos aceptan ese llamado. A few weeks ago, we extended the invitation for people to join small groups. Hace unas semanas que hicimos una invitación para que se unieran a grupos pequeños. We've only had four people sign up. Y hasta ahora solamente cuatro personas se han inscrito. Please, when you leave, sign up. Por favor, por favor al salir hoy, inscríbanse. We need to grow and the, one of the ways, one, not, it won't be the only, we need cells to work. Una de las maneras, no la única manera, pero es tener esos grupos. So, thank you so much, and we will now continue our vows. Ah, sí, gracias, y vamos a seguir con el, el evento. We have the Vargas family, and we're going to ask you that after we read each one of the vows, that you may raise your right hand to reaffirm what you've heard. Y entonces, uh, vamos a leer los votos, y vamos a pedir que después de cada voto, levante la mano para afirmar que sí lo aceptan. And the church will give a hearty amen. Y la iglesia va a decir amén. No. Okay. Lo tengo en la oficina, disculpen. Sorry. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Aceptan a Jesucristo como salvador personal. And do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? Y desean vivir una vida salvífica en una relación con él. Amen. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statements of the fundamental beliefs. Aceptan las enseñanzas de la Biblia como son expresados en las creencias fundamentales de la Iglesia Adventista. And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Y con uh, te compromete a vivir bajo la gracia de Dios a vivir en armonía con estas enseñanzas. Amen. 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 Do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your beliefs in Jesus Christ? Desea ser bautizado como una expresión pública de esa creencia en Jesucristo. To be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Para ser aceptado como miembro de la Iglesia Adventista del séptimo día. And to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence. Para aceptar a la Iglesia y su misión como un mayor, mayordomo fiel en la influencia personal. Tithes and offerings and a life of service. Las, los diezmos y los ofrendas y una vida de servicio. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we're saying here, we've seen that the Vargas family, a family, aquí, has accepted the Lord. Aquí vemos que la familia Vargas, una familia ha aceptado a Jesucristo. Our goal is, and you've heard me say this before. Y es nuestra meta, ya lo he mencionado anteriormente. Reach out to family. Queremos alcanzar familia. A friend. A un amigo, a neighbor, un vecino, a stranger, un desconocido. Each one reach one this year. Y que de cada uno debemos alcanzar uno en este año. You're not preaching. No estamos predicando. But we're being a friend in the name of Jesus. Pero en el nombre de Jesucristo somos un amigo. And that is why we're able to see that a family has said to the Lord, Yes, Lord, I accept you. Y por eso vemos que una familia ha declarado, Sí, Señor, te acepto. Thank you very much. You y may gracias. pass. Go to uh, follow the Pueden beacon. Seguir. We want to thank our brother Molina for his interpreting as well. Amen. Amen. And we'll, we'll ask, yes.
Buen día, familia. Quiero decir algunas palabras, como regularmente acostumbro cuando bautizamos aquí en la iglesia. Pero para esto prefiero que la familia esté aquí. Así que le voy a pedir a la familia Vargas que entre en este momento. We're going to invite the Vargas family to step forward now. I have to say, the Vargas family is blessed. The water's not cold like last week. No es como la semana pasada donde la, el agua estaba bien frío, así que están bendecidos. Sister Reina, can you raise your hand? La hermana Reina, por favor, levante la mano. Praise the Lord. Gloria a Dios. You made it and God will bless. Llegaste si el Señor va a bendecir. Amen. Oye, miren esta, miren esta imagen. Contemplen este momento tan especial. Look at this image. Think about this beautiful moment. Eh, es posible que por mucho tiempo, ojalá sea todos los sábados que veamos una imagen así, pero no es común ver este escenario tan hermoso. And there's nothing like seeing a beautiful scene like this. Hopefully we can see this kind of scene every Sabbath. Yo que estoy aquí al lado de ellos, eh, siento una gran alegría ciertamente. Standing next to them, I feel a great joy. Pero yo sé que esta alegría también la comparte toda la iglesia, no solamente el ministerio hispano. But I know that this joy is shared by the entire church and not just the Spanish ministry. Pero donde hay más alegría es en el reino de los cielos. But the greatest joy is now in, in the kingdom of heaven. Algunas personas posiblemente estén aquí sentadas preguntándose, pero los conocemos hace mucho a ellos. Somebody might be sitting here and saying, but I, I feel like I've known them for a long time. Ellos son miembros de la iglesia, ¿por qué se están bautizando? Aren't they church members? Are they re-baptizing? Why is that? Y justamente es por eso que tomé este minuto aclaratorio. And that's why I wanted to take this moment to clarify. La familia Vargas llegó aquí a Duluth. Eh, ya habían visitado otras iglesias alrededor. The Vargas family came here to Duluth and they visited other neighboring churches. Ellos vinieron desde California. Pero la iglesia que les gustó fue la de Duluth. They came here from California, but the church that they enjoyed was Duluth. Así que no olvidemos la hospitalidad, el amor y el cariño de hermanos. Therefore, don't forget to be hospitable, loving, and welcoming as brethren. Sin embargo, Catalina y Daniel, que son una familia, son una pareja ejemplar, muy trabajadora en la iglesia. Catalina y Daniel are a very um, a role model to the church, very active in the church. Pero ellos no eran miembros de la Iglesia Adventista. But they were not members of the Seventh-day Adventist eran church. Cristianos fieles. They were faithful Christians. Bautizados como Jesús manda. Baptized as, as Jesus has declared we should Pero be baptized. Pero no eran miembros de la Iglesia Adventista. But they were repito. not members of the Seventh-day Adventist church. Así que cuando se le presentó la opción de ser aceptado por profesión de fe o por bautismo, ellos eligieron ser bautizados con todos sus, con sus hijos. So when they were given the option to either become members by profession of faith or baptism, they decided to be baptized with their children. Yeah. Amen. Porque ellos no solamente quieren continuar siendo cristianos, sino que también desean ser miembros de esta iglesia. Not only do they want to continue being affirming their, their being Christians, but they want to be members of this church. Así que por eso quise aclarar esta parte. Ellos son cristianos, pero ahora son miembros de la iglesia de Duluth. And that's why I wanted to clarify that point. They are Christians, but now they will be members of the, seven, of the Duluth Seventh-day Adventist Church. Les invito para que oremos. And I invite you to pray with us. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, en esta hora venimos a ofrecer adoración a tu nombre. Lord, at this time we um, bring worship to you. Gracias porque tu gracia se extiende sobre la tierra para salvación de todos los mortales. We thank you because your grace reaches all across the earth for all mortal beings. Gracias porque hoy aquí en la tierra nos unimos en alegría, en fiesta y celebración por estos que hoy entregan sus vidas a Jesucristo. We thank you because today we are united in celebration of these who give their lives over to you. En esta hora, Señor, por obra del Espíritu Santo, And at this moment, in, uh, by the Holy Spirit, Pido que estas aguas sean consagradas y bendecidas para este momento tan solemne. I ask that these waters be uh, sanctified for this very solemn moment. Que sirvan como una tumba líquida en la cual su vida pasada quede en, la, en el pasado y comiencen en nueva vida para gloria tuya. That they be as a liquid uh, tomb where their former lives are cast away and they can start a new life with you. 
Conforme a tu palabra, pedimos que en esta hora tu Espíritu Santo descienda sobre cada uno de ellos. According to your word, we ask that the Holy Spirit now descend upon each one of them. Que sus pecados sean perdonados por la sangre de Jesús. That their sins be now forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. Que sus nombres sean confirmados e inscritos en el libro de la vida. That their names be confirmed in and written in the book of life. Y que de ahora adelante estén preparados y preparando a otros para el encuentro contigo en tu segunda venida. And that moving forward they can be prepared and preparing others, Lord, for your second coming. En el nombre de Jesús. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. algunas palabras en esta hora. I'm going to say a few words at this, mo this time. Recuerdo perfectamente hace algo más de un año cuando llegaste acá con tu familia y desde entonces te he conocido, me has dado tu amistad, tu cariño, tu apoyo en la iglesia como un cristiano y me doy cuenta que eres un gran hombre, un hombre de Dios, Amen. que estás caminando como le agrada a Dios, instruyendo a tu familia que es tu tesoro más sagrado en los caminos de Dios. Y hoy traes a las aguas bautismales a tus dos grandes tesoros, Isaac y Isabela. Amen. Hoy has pedido ser bautizado aquí en la iglesia adventista del séptimo día de Duluth. Y es por eso que conforme al llamado de Jesús, a su orden, a su mandato de ir y bautizar, hoy... Te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Amen. Amen. We have tears back here. There are tears. But these are tears of joy. Amen. Catalina, definitivamente eres una gran sierva de Dios. Hoy no comienzas, pero sí continúas tu caminar hacia el reino de los cielos. Comienza una nueva etapa aquí en tu testimonio público de confirmación de que amas a Jesús, de que a pesar de las adversidades y las pruebas, a pesar de los opositores, hoy continúas el camino de Jesús. Como dice en el Apocalipsis, siguiendo al Cordero por donde quiera que va. Tú has pedido hoy ser bautizada en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo en la Iglesia Adventista de Dulut. Y conforme al mandato de Jesús, hoy tengo el privilegio de bautizarte en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. 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 Este es un jovencito especial, es un líder, es eh, 11 años, ¿verdad Isaac? Eh, es un jovencito, yo recuerdo que a su edad fui bautizado también y él ha expresado su deseo de ser un pastor. He wants to be a pastor. Así que oremos por él, obviamente a partir de ahora él va a tener oposición de parte del enemigo. Pero Isaac en este día eh, es un gran privilegio para mí. Al estar aquí en estas aguas, recuerdo cuando yo también estuve en estas aguas a tu edad. Y desde entonces he tenido muchas adversidades y opositores, pero me he mantenido fiel, no por mis méritos, sino por los méritos de Cristo, por la obra del Espíritu Santo en mi vida. Es por eso que en esta hora pido al Señor que el Espíritu Santo esté contigo, que te convierta en un joven de testimonio, que donde quiera que estés, en la escuela, en la casa y más adelante desenvolviéndote en otras actividades, sigas testificando de que eres una luz que brilla para gloria de Dios. Es por eso que en este día tengo el privilegio, porque tú lo has pedido voluntariamente, de bautizarte conforme al mandato de Jesús en estas aguas consagradas, en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. 
Amen. Amen. Esta es la princesa del hogar. Eh, Isabela, tu sonrisa es como una luz que brilla para gloria de Dios. Que esa sonrisa, el Espíritu de Dios la conserve en tu vida. En lo adelante estarás creciendo, pronto te convertirás en una mujer. Que esa mujer también sea una gran sierva de Dios. Es por eso que en esta mañana, contento, recuerdo las palabras de Jesús, nuestro maestro que dijo que de los niños como tú es el reino de los cielos. Tú eres como la niña de los ojos de Dios. Él te ama, te cuida y te preservará fiel, te preservará fiel hasta el encuentro con el Señor en su segunda venida. Hoy te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Este momento el enemigo quería estorbarlo desde desde par de días atrás. Eh, la gripe, que la fiebre. Isabela está aquí hoy por obra de Dios, la pequeña. Uh, for a few days now, the enemy has been working against the family, and the father was sick for a few days, and we see that also. I'm sorry, the daughter was sick. Sí, pero como tiene una gran madre, la cuidó y una gran abuela que está aquí But también esta the hora. The grandmother and mom, who are great, did great work to Cuidaron, restore her. Cuidaron, hicieron todo lo posible para que ella pudiera ser bautizada so hoy. So that she could be here for her baptism today. Así que en esta hora una vez más, ya que ellos han sido bautizados, yo quiero que toda la iglesia. And I want to invite everyone now, now that they have been baptized, that the entire church. Primeramente levantemos las dos manos. Please raise both hands. Para dar la bienvenida a la iglesia. To welcome them. Y ahora un gran aplauso para ellos. And a great applause. Um, I'm going to say this in English and um, just try to repeat it a little bit in Spanish, but um, this is years in the making. Um, when my husband and I first got baptized in another Christian church, we did it out of uh, pure brokenness. Um, we didn't know the Lord. We were trying to figure him out. And we asked for help. And we got baptized because we wanted to follow his ways. And we did for many years in, in our old church. But we didn't really know the truth. And we didn't know that, you know, Sabbath is, we didn't pay attention that it's part of the commandments and that it's the real way of life. And when my husband, the head of our household, brought this truth to us at home about Four years ago now, we started understanding a lot of things together as a family. We've been um, studying the word. We've been trying to congregate. We came from California. We searched. And as we came to this church, thank you all for your welcome. Uh, we have bonded. And now we are getting baptized out of pure love. And never in my life would I have imagined that my children would be part of it. And they want it to be for many months now. And this was the day that the Lord has made. And it's a beautiful day. Thank you. So, yes. All right. So what? Uh, Sister Catalina was saying is that when they were baptized, oh, in español, perdón. <laughs> mil disculpas, mil disculpas. Lo que la hermana Catalina eh, estaba diciendo desde el fondo de su corazón era que años atrás cuando ellos se bautizaron, se bautizaron por estar quebrantados, pero que hoy se bautizaron por amor a Dios y que sintieron ellos, ¿no? El, el, el hermano Vargas como patriarca del hogar, Dios 
Eh, ellos cuando se mudaron de California acá estaban buscando iglesias y encontraron un lugar donde se sienten y son familia. Y Dios tocó su corazón para que no solamente ellos se bautizaran, sino que también su hijita y el hijito pudieran entonces aceptar a Cristo como su salvador personal. Hay gozo en el cielo. Muy bien, el próximo bautismo. Hay personas que están aquí sentadas ahora que se están preparando. And there is someone here, uh, there are people who are getting prepared for the next baptism. Para ser bautizados. El agua eh, no, no entiende de idiomas. El agua es igual para todos. The water uh, knows no bounds, there's no language, it understands everyone. Así que en esta hora quiero hacer una invitación formal. I'd like to make a formal invitation at this moment. Y un llamado en el nombre del Señor Jesús. And a calling in the name of Jesus Christ. Quien nos llama a novedad de vida. He is who calls us to a new life. Y a prepararnos para la verdadera vida, que no es esta. Esta, ustedes se han dado cuenta en este tiempo cómo se va la vida de fácil. To prepare us for what true life is. In this life, it, it goes by really fast. Pero la vida eterna que recibimos en el momento del bautismo, But esa eternal, es la verdadera vida. Eternal life, the one that we receive at baptism, that is our true life. Quien tiene a Cristo tiene la vida. El que no tiene a Cristo no tiene vida. If you have Christ, you have life. If you do not have Christ, you do not have life. Si quieres aceptar a Cristo en esta mañana y prepararte para el próximo bautismo. Do you want to accept Christ and be prepared for the next baptism? Hay alguna persona que quiera levantar su mano para confirmar a la iglesia que está preparado para el próximo bautismo o que quiera bautizarse en los próximos meses o días. Does anyone want to raise their hand and make that commitment to be baptized in the next Alabado few weeks Señor. or months? Allá está Jason, Praise está the Lord. Luis y está Selimar. Muy bien. Ya estaremos haciendo los arreglos con Luis Elimar, que son la nueva pareja, el nuevo, la nueva familia de la iglesia. Están recién casados. We'll be making plans with a family that's new to the church, um, newly married, that are going to be baptized. Y también Jason, que está ya también preparado Jason para el próximo well, bautismo. Who is also being prepared for the next baptism. Ojalá, ojalá, ojalá. And our hope is that it happens. Que el bill del agua de aquí de la iglesia se multiplique por siete. Amén. <laughs> that we can multiply the size of this by seven. Muy bien. Vamos a orar para terminar. And let's close with prayer. Amado, amado Padre Celestial, gracias por este momento tan especial. Beloved Heavenly Father, thank you for this very special moment. Gracias por bendecir a la familia Vargas. Thank you for blessing the Vargas family. Gracias por cumplir tu promesa para ellos. Thank you for fulfilling this promise for gracias them. Gracias por redimirlos por la sangre de Jesús. Thank you for redeeming them by the blood of Christ. Y gracias porque esa redención es para cada uno de tus hijos que hoy venimos a adorar. And thank you that that redemption is for each one of your children Bendito, who has come here to adore you. Bendito, exaltado y alabado sea tu nombre por tu misericordia. Blessed and praised be your name. For your en, great mercy. En el nombre de Jesús, nuestro Señor. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The short of it is that the pastor is saying that we got to work. O sea, que el punto es que el pastor dice tenemos que trabajar. I second that motion, pastor. Estoy de apoyo. Amen. Pastor? Amen. Gloria a Dios. Good morning, church. Good morning. I hope I can get through this. I didn't expect to be emotional today. Um, can you imagine what heaven is feeling? <laughs> I'm just seeing them for the first time, watching them rededicate their lives to Christ, and I'm choked up. But I imagine heaven is just celebrating over this um, event today. So um, to God be the glory. My name is Sabrina Patton, and I am the principal at Duluth Adventist Christian School. And it is an awesome privilege to participate in this evangelism ministry each and every day. First, I just want to thank this church for their continued prayers and their support over the years. Specifically, I want to thank you for praying for one of our students who was in a terrible car accident at the end of last year. I'll get you. He was in the hospital for many weeks and home recuperating. Right here in this corner, Elder Mazzillo got on his knees and prayed for him and his family. And on Monday, Noah returned back to school. Yeah. That showed our children that our God is awesome. Yeah. 
and that God is a healer and he is a restorer. So thank you for your prayers and continue praying for the family as they continue to heal up from their um, accident. I also want to thank this church for uh, participating in the Giving Tree Women's Ministry organized the Giving Tree where you were able to pick um, miscellaneous students and make sure that they had some nice warm socks for the winter, gloves, coats, jackets, and so thank you so much for those of you who participated in that Giving Tree project. For over 50 years, the Lord has blessed this Duluth Church family by having a school right on its campus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. The Lord says that except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. That's Psalms 127 and verse 1. I suppose the same could be said for a school. Except the Lord build a school, <laughs> they labor in vain. But whether it is a home, a church, a school, the Lord must be the foundation. He must be the cornerstone. As each of the faces are different here in this sanctuary today, so are the ideas about Adventist education. Some are true and some are not. So today I'd like to challenge uh, three myths about Adventist education. You've seen the show Mythbusters on TV. I'm going to be a Mythbuster today. <laughs> All right, I have three myths that I want to um, bust today. Can we get our slides uh, for myth one? All right, myth one. Education provided in Adventist schools is poor. No, 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 no. Many millions of people all over the world have attended Adventist schools and have gone on to become successful individuals contributing positively to society. You may even be sitting by one. We have accountants, nurses, lawyers, musicians, and more. When our eighth graders graduate, and whether they continue to go to an SDA high school or not, they are prepared for their matriculation and most often continue on to college. Last year, our DAC standardized test scores averaged in range from 4 to 7% higher in reading and math than Gwinnett County. And that is something to be uh, thankful to God for, to him. Thankful to God for that. Um, not only that, we try to make sure that we provide our children with all kinds of different experiences. We have a robotics team that made it to the national finals last year. <laughs> to God be the glory. We also have the National Honor Society challenging our students to be better than the best. Um, they had to achieve a 3.8. Right now, we have 21 students who are in our National Honor Society. Amen. True education is the harmonies, development of mental, physical, and spiritual powers. And this is what we aim to do each and every day at DAX. Myth number two, SDA schools need better teachers. Hmm. I might be a little bit biased, but I think we have some of the best teachers on the planet right here at DAX. Teaching is a calling. It is a ministry. It is a spiritual gift. The educators at DAX deliver quality instruction, challenging students to be critical thinkers, problem solvers, and most importantly, help our children understand that Jesus loves them unconditionally. Our teachers are highly qualified and certified, all holding master's degrees except for one who will be finished in February. Amen? Amen. All right. DAX teachers are intentional when it comes to professional development. These classes ensure that we are current on educational trends and that we maintain and keep our NAD and any state certifications that we may hold. So, we need better teachers. I think we have the best right next door. <laughs> Myth number three. Yes, that did deserve an applause. <laughs> Myth number three. 
Religion should only be taught at home and at church. If you listen to or watch the news for any moment, you will see that this world is becoming more and more and more wicked. There is never enough opportunity to teach our kids about Christ, to teach them about love and about peace and about grace. So Dax would like to have the opportunity to come alongside you as a parent and provide our children with a foundation that they can rely on in this wicked world. When they're faced with worldly compromises, that they will have values, virtues, morality, devotion, and conviction. This is the preparation that will help our kids function in this world and be prepared for the world to come. This church has a thriving children's ministry. Amen? Amen. The way you prioritize your children is outstanding, from Sabbath school to adventurers to pathfinders. But I urge you, prayerfully consider allowing Dax to partner with you to provide your children with academic excellence and ensure that they are spiritually planted and grounded in a firm foundation. One day is good. Two days, that's even better. But imagine a daily opportunity to have Christ taught across the curriculum. A school that has been established and anointed where God is the cornerstone. I will be in the lobby following our service today to answer any questions that you may have about DAX or about Christian education. You can also pick up flyers for our upcoming open house, which will be the last Sunday of February. What a joy it will be, just like today, to see all of our children, all of our sons and our daughters saved in God's kingdom. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. That was our wonderful uh, principal, Mrs. Patton. Now you're going to be uh, relaxing with our students here at DAX. This is our praise team from DAX. They're all middle schoolers. Please keep them in your prayer as they praise God from the pulpit today. Please support them as much as possible. Thank you. Our first song will be Goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so. I love your voice, you have led me through the fire, in darkest nights, you are close like no other, I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life 
if you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Our next song will be, Oh, Come to the Altar. Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood. Bow down. 
Our last and final song will be What a Beautiful Name It Is. exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that the name of Jesus so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ to the glory of God and the Father
please stand for our opening hymn. You may now be seated. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. It's a high Sabbath today. It's a very high Sabbath today. Four baptisms. And we're here praising the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray before we open up God's word. Dear Jesus, we want to thank you so much for this opportunity to be here today. I ask that you speak through me now and help these words not be mine, but be yours. Help everyone to see right through me, to see a beautiful picture of Jesus, because that's who we're here for. We love you so much, and please send your Holy Spirit to be with us as we open your word, because Lord, it is your word, and we need you to interpret your word. So Lord, guide us now. In your name we pray. Amen. My heart rate was quickening as I pulled into the parking lot of my first job in Michigan. I had decided to work off campus um, instead of on campus. The, the pay rate was better. That was the main motivator. Um, they offered to pay me a little bit more, and they offered to work with my, my busy uh, student schedule. But that meant working in an atmosphere that I had never worked in before. You see, I grew up in Adventist schools. I grew up in the Adventist world. I had never worked outside of that world. So I was stepping into an environment that was quite foreign to me. I was stepping into that environment for the very first time. It seemed wild to me to work outside of the church, but there I was. And as I parked the car, I thought to myself, just go out there and do your very best. When I repeated this phrase often, whatever my hand finds to do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen. Whatever my hand finds to do, do it all for the glory of God. And that was my first day at Drive and Shine Car Wash. <laughs> <laughs> I worked at a car wash for a little bit of time. I was that annoying guy that came out to your window and said, hey, you want to you wanna get a membership here? We can charge you monthly. You can just come in as many times as you want. And I was also that guy in the tunnel that was just doing this and then telling you to put your car in neutral and all that good stuff. Um, 
It was a fun job, and I definitely learned a lot working outside of that Adventist, Adventist bubble, if you would use that term. I met people from all walks of life with very different viewpoints than my own. I met people who didn't want anything to do with God, who saw Christianity as a cult, didn't want anything to do with it. And then I met some people who had walked away from church, still believed that there was a God out there, but didn't feel like he was quite concerned with them. I met people from all different kinds of walks of life. But I resolved in my mind as I worked there to simply love my coworkers and do my best to simply meet them where they were and show them the love of Christ. It was because of this decision that I believe God was able to plant some seeds through me and that some amazing things took place while I worked there. And friends, in our scripture reading today, Jesus gives a clear call to mission. This passage known as the Great Commission encapsulates the mission that God has. And church, I believe that we are commissioned to conquer. Commissioned to conquer for the kingdom of God. So I invite you now to turn in your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 28. The last chapter in the book of Matthew, in the gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. I picked this opening hymn, Jesus Paid It All, because Jesus has already paid it all by this point. He went to the cross, he died, he resurrected, and he's with disciples, his disciples, and he gives this command. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Are we there? Amen. All right. Matthew chapter 28. Verses 18, I want to start in verse 18. Just three simple points we're going to get from this, all right? Three simple points. Verse 18 is point one. Verse 19 is point two. Verse 20 is point three. All right, so verse 18. Then Jesus came and said to them, all authority. How much? All, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Friends, you can't start talking about this mission, this great commission, without understanding this verse right here. Because if we attempt to go out into our community, if we attempt to go out and evangelize the city of Duluth, and we don't go out in the authority of Jesus, we will fail. We have to know the authority of the one who is doing the sending before the sent can accomplish the mission. We don't go out on our own authority, but we go out in the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. We are commissioned to conquer because it's his authority that we are going out on, not on our own. Because, friends, by this point, Jesus can say this statement because he has redeemed the world by this point. Isn't that exciting news? Because of his perfect life, his death, his resurrection, he now holds all authority on earth and in heaven. Because you see, at the very beginning, when sin was born, even before Adam and Eve, when sin was conceived in Satan's heart because he wanted the throne... And he took that sin and planted it in humanity. When humanity disobeyed God, this world plunged into darkness and sin. The enemy had a claim on this world because of sin. The enemy had a claim on your life. He had a claim on my life. But Jesus. Jesus holds the authority now. Jesus has the claim on your life. Jesus has the claim on my life. Jesus has a claim on this church. Jesus has a claim on this world because he conquered the ultimate penalty, the worst thing that sin could ever do to you. He conquered it. He conquered death itself. For the wages of sin is death. The worst thing the enemy can throw at you, Jesus said, I conquered it. So he now holds the authority. And I think Jesus starts this call, this great commission with this point because he wants to instill confidence. He wants to instill confidence, not in our own abilities. No, 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 no. Don't get it twisted. He wants to instill confidence in him. He wants us to understand that we can have confidence in him because it's in him that all things can be accomplished. He wants to build our confidence on all those who would dare accept this call. And why is this confidence necessary in Jesus? I believe it's necessary because the moment you decide to accept the call, the enemy will see you as a direct threat to his kingdom. 
And when the enemy sees you as a threat, you best better believe he will attack his threats. I remember in high school, I had the opportunity to go on four, sh four short-term mission trips. And one of these mission trips, we went to Panama. Um, pastor, uh, we went to Panama. And not only we were going we to build some churches there, but we were also going to do an evangelistic series. And I was asked to preach one of the nights. And so we were, we were um, given sermons to preach on. There, were, there was a set of sermons, and as students in high school, we were given one. It was given to me way ahead of time. Way, way ahead of time before we left. So I was able to kind of prep it. I was going through it. I changed some of the stories to make my own personal stories and put myself in the sermon, you know, that they teach you to do and, and all that stuff. And so I prepped the sermon and I was like, all right, this is, this is good. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to preach this sermon. So we get on the plane, we go, and then it comes to my night to preach. And about 30 minutes before we leave, the pastor who was with us on the trip walks up to me and says, I gave you the wrong sermon. Here's the right one. I said, Mercy, can't you just switch me with the other person? <laughs> um, and he apologized. I'm so sorry, but here's the right sermon. And so I was shocked as he handed me a stack of papers about 30 pages long. And that had slides that I was not prepared to preach on. But I showed up that night and I preached. And with translation, it was an hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> These poor people listening to this little high schooler. It was an hour and 30 minutes long. Oh, and I'm pretty sure that my translator was butchering what I was saying. I don't speak Spanish, but I knew enough. And I was like, I don't think that's what I said, but it's all right. Oh, man, friends, don't be surprised when we talk about plans for evangelism and roadblocks show up. Don't be, surprised, don't be surprised when conflict starts to arise in the church when we start setting our hearts on evangelism. Because the enemy only attacks things that he sees as threats to his kingdom. And it is my desire, I believe it is our desire, Duluth Church, to be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. I want the devil to tremble every time a member of the Duluth Church wakes up in the morning because the enemy knows a warrior for Christ has just arisen from their slumber. It was after that night that I finished preaching that I had people with tears in their eyes walk up to me and say, my life has changed because of what you've said. And I guarantee you that was not me because I was reading stuff that I had no idea what it was saying. But I was preaching it. So even though there may be roadblocks that show up, even though there may be things that arise, because the enemy is trying to stop the work of the church, don't be surprised when those roadblocks are removed. Don't be surprised when the conflict is resolved because we don't go out in our own authority. We go out in the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. We step out in confidence to evangelize this community because we go in the name and the power of Jesus Christ. We are commissioned to conquer by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We may go out with trembling hearts, but that's okay because we're not confident in our abilities. We're confident in his authority. So now that we understand whose authority we're going out on, let's read verse 19. What is this mission? What exactly is this mission that he's sending us out on? Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We must go and we must make. If you want to know about the Greek, ask me later. It's quite complicated. But these two words in the Greek, they are the same in authority. They are the same in mission. They are the same in value. When Jesus said this, he says, I want you to go, but I also want you to make we cannot go without making, and we cannot make without going. That's the point. We have to go. We have to make. Both actions are equal value in the eyes of Jesus. It's called a partic participle of attendant circumstance. That's what, it, that's what it's called. <laughs> it's a fancy term, but the two words mean the same. Jesus says, I want you to go, and I want you to make. That's the mission. We must go and we must make, but how? Well, Jesus gives us the blueprints here, baptizing them 
In the name of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus names two things that, that must be done for a disciple to be made. And the first one is to be baptized. This is a clear single event in the life of a, of a believer to be baptized, to, to have that moment that we just witnessed where people say, I want to unite my life with Christ and I want to live for him. The old is gone, the new has come. But friends, we cannot view discipleship as a one and done event. Because it's not just baptize and also teaching them. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Praise the Lord that this year so far we have had five people already baptized. This baptismal tank has gotten full twice already. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are doing great things here. But friends, we are commissioned to conquer and it's not just the baptismal tank that needs attention what about after? Because see, we often see baptism as an end result. And, and the temptation is, is to view people as a project to say, all right, we baptize them. Let's move on to the next one. We view it as a graduation ceremony rather than a birth. The discipleship process does not end at baptism. And I'm not downplaying baptism. It's one of the most important things ever. I remember my baptism clearly to this day. At Cahada Springs Youth Camp, I was baptized. And that day was filled with joy for me. But friends, there's a second piece. And that second piece is learning every single day. Discipleship is a lifelong journey, a process that does not have an end point. Because let me tell you something, if there was an end point to the discipleship process, if there was an end point to your learning, arrogance would begin to set into your mind and you would no longer feel your need for God. But the greatest thing about the word of God, the greatest thing about journeying with Jesus is that there's always something to discover. There's always something to learn. There's always something to grow in my life. There's always imperfections that I need to work on. And it's through that partnership with Christ, it's through that growth journey that I get the opportunity to keep moving forward every single day of my life. And that's beautiful. Praise the Lord that there's not an end point and arrogance would begin to set in because then I would become my own God. We need to understand that the discipleship process is a lifelong journey. And friends, you know that our global church is struggling with this. I don't know if you guys are aware. David Trim, he's the director of the, um, of the church's Office of Archives, Statistics, the General Conference's Office of Archives, Statistics, and Research. And during the annual council of 2020, as part of the secretary report to the General Conference Executive Committee on October 8, 2020, this is what he said. He says, since 1965, 40,421,554 people have been members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. That's how many we baptized. Thanks be to God. Tragically, this is a direct quote. Tragically, the number who have left since then has now passed 16 million. And our net loss rate has now ticked over above 40%. In the last 55 years then, of the 40.4 million church members, at least 16.24 million have left. One of the top reasons that these people have left is because they have simply drifted away. It wasn't a problem with doctrine. It wasn't a problem with any of those things. They simply drifted away. Because they were baptized and then forgotten about. And friends, we have to be better. We must continuously teach people about Jesus Christ beyond the baptismal tank. This is why Pastor and I want to start small groups here because it's in the context of small groups that people can't drift away because they're connected to a group. They're connected to a family. They're connected to a group of people that cares about them. We cannot let our people drift away. Friends, we are more connected 
ever nowadays because of our technology, but somehow we're more disconnected than ever. All it takes is a call. All it takes is a text. All it takes is an email. All it takes is a, is a direct message on social media. This is all it takes for people to be brought back in to realize someone's thinking about me. We must teach one another about the things that Jesus has commanded and continuously build up relationships with one another by sharing how Jesus is still working and moving in our lives. We are commissioned to conquer by upholding these relationships and teaching each other daily about how Christ is working in our lives and about the things that he has commanded us. To love one another. The world will know you if you love one another. The world will know that Jesus lives in you if you have love for one another. We have to break beyond the barriers of this individualistic society that we live in and be a community and a body of believers. When one body part is suffering, that the other parts move in to support. We are commissioned to conquer. So church, let's keep baptizing. I want to see this baptismal tank full as much as possible, at least one a month. At least, that's the bare minimum, one a month. If each one of us goes out and reaches one, we will double the size of this church. I want to see this tank full. But I also want to see people plugged into the church where they find life in this community. And that they find support and love and care in this community. So that they stay here and don't just simply drift away. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Now, Jesus could have left it right there. He could have. He could have left it right there. But he tacks on one beautiful thing at the end and surely surely you can take this to the bank surely i am with you always you go out in the authority of jesus you teach in the authority of jesus you baptize in the authority of jesus but you do not go alone You go in the the presence of Jesus Christ. His promise is sure that I am with you always. The promise that is all throughout the scriptures. That I am with you. So do not forget that God is with you. Do not forget to do what Hebrews 12 says. To fix your eyes upon Jesus. The author and the finisher of your faith. Let us run this race with endurance. Fixing our eyes upon Jesus. Don't forget that he's with you always. Please don't forget that promise. To the very end of the age. He is with you. And the highs and the lows and everything in between. Please don't forget that promise. It was after I started to get to know my coworkers that a few of them really started to open up to me. One of my coworkers started to share with me that she had been raised in the Catholic Church. She walked away because she didn't really agree with the idea of I have to do a lot of stuff to get into heaven. <laughs> I was like, same. <laughs> I don't agree with that either. And I had a, an opportunity to share with her how I saw the gospel and the freedom that it provided in my life. That I now get the opportunity to live in relationship with the one who created me. That I now have the opportunity to walk in freedom, not in guilt, not in condemnation, not in shame, but in freedom and joy. And that I didn't have to do nothing but accept it. That Christ said, here's the gift and put it on the table and said, you want it? And I said, I do. And he said, take it. It's yours for the taking. Another one of my, my, my supervisor, she started to share with me how she used to pray to God every single morning. Someone who doesn't go to church prayed every single morning and challenged me because I look at my life and I say, <laughs> sometimes I don't pray every morning. Sometimes I'm so caught up in my busyness that I forget. 
She said, I used to pray every single morning, but she doesn't anymore. I asked her why. She said, I seem to wake up, and the first thing that clouds my mind is worry. I can't even, pro- I can't even begin to think about God. I, I'm thinking about what I got to do today. I'm thinking about, about my, I'm, I'm taking care of my, of my siblings and all this stuff. And I said, did you know that you can take your worries to God? Did you know that you can simply say, God, I'm so worried right now about all this stuff. Can you take care of it? She said, I can do that. She had no idea. She thought she had to, you know, fold her hands, get on her knees and bow her head and God, today is so good. I'm so thankful for all your goodness and all this stuff, which is great things. But she didn't realize that she could bring her burdens to God in prayer. And I was able to share with her, like, no, you can bring your worries. You can bring your burdens. Cast cast your burdens upon him. All your anxieties, all your worries. And all these conversations started to happen organically as I simply decided to love them. I learned a, value, a valuable experience at Drive and Shine Car Wash. <laughs> I learned that there are people out there yearning to know God. That there are people out there yearning to know this God that deeply cares about them, that knit them together in their mother's wombs. They deeply need this God. I even started to invite my, my supervisor to some of the church events we had going on. And she would come, and she wouldn't come alone. She'd bring like four other people with her. And while I never got to see them in the baptismal tank, I pray and I know that the Holy Spirit is going to be watering that seed. He's going to be watering that seed. Because, friends, that's what we're called to do. That's what this is. Go out and make disciples. We go out, we plant seeds, we let the Holy Spirit water them. And we teach them to obey everything that Jesus has commanded us. The crazy part is that Jesus wants us to deliver that message. He calls you to deliver that message. He could have used angels, he has. But he decided to use you. He decided to use you. So friends, don't forget that you are commissioned to conquer for the kingdom of God. So I invite you to get up warriors of Christ. And let's change the city of Duluth. By accepting this call of the Great Commission that Jesus gives us to go and make, baptize and teach. And we go out, not in our own authority, but in the authority of Christ. And with the promise that he's right there with us. That he's right there with us. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we want to thank you so much. For this great commission, this call that gives us a purpose for being here, God. There are so many people that are struggling with purpose right now. They don't know why they're here. They don't know what they want to do. The world screams at them, make a ton of money. Um, Do this, do that, then you'll find happiness. But Lord, we know that your word is clear. What gives us a purpose is this mission right here. To prepare people for the world beyond this one. To go out, to love people to baptize, to teach, Lord. This is the greatest call that we have. And we can do that anywhere we are, with our coworkers, with our friends, with our neighbors. Lord, help us to remember that you're with us always and we go out on your authority and help us to trust you in all things. We love you and we thank you. In your name we pray, amen. Please stand for our closing hymn.
silent and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light. Let's pray one more time. Dear Lord, we want to thank you so much to, for the opportunity to be here today. Help us to go out and share your message with the world. We love you and we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just want to share a brief reminder as well. Um, the funeral service today at 4 p.m. for the Estrada family will be here today. Um, so the family would love for you to come out and support. God bless, guys. Easter's ex. Um for the men, if you, you, you can, stay for a little bit after church is done today, which is now. So, um, <laughs> It's been a long day, but it's been a wonderful day. Amen? Amen.